Hey, Wonder Hussy here, out in fabulous, sunny Southern Arizona. Actually not too far outside the town of Tombstone, Arizona, which is a real famous ghost town in these parts. But I'm here at a lesser known ghost town, just outside Tombstone, called Gleason. And though you've probably never heard of it, Gleason was actually a really interesting place and was noteworthy for being the site of one of the last Wild West shootouts, <laughs> okay, in 1917. <laughs> Imagine 1917, you see people driving around San Francisco in those old-timey cars, guys going over to, well, fight World War One. you know, those were like modern times. <laughs> well, not so much down here. I guess back in those days, uh, Arizona was a dry state. I think they passed a bill in 1915 uh, banning the sale of alcohol in the entire state of Arizona. So down in this little corner where we are, uh, we're not too far from Mexico, and we're not too far from New Mexico, both of which were wet. So there was a lot of alcohol smuggling going on down here. Oh gosh, back in the, well, the 19-teens. Mexican alcohol smugglers would uh, come up from Mexico, come up through the Chiricahua Mountains, which aren't too far from here. I don't think that's them, but in this area and uh, they'd strap like cases of booze to, to donkeys and like carry them through the mountains and then you know bring them to the well bring them to the thirsty folks in arizona this was before prohibition so you know booze was still legal in new mexico and uh, california and everywhere else just for whatever reason arizona had to be dry and well the mexicans were gonna see to it that they didn't have to suffer so apparently this the last shootout or one of the last shootouts was in uh, March, I think it was March 5th, 1917, I think it was the sheriff and his deputy were driving around the Chiricahua Mountains uh, looking for smugglers in an Oldsmobile touring car, okay? this Remember, it was 1917, so some old-timey Oldsmobile. Sheriff and his deputy are driving around looking for smugglers all day, and after a long day of driving, they started heading back towards Gleason, and well, it started to get dark. And back then, you can imagine, <laughs> well, the roads weren't anything like they are now. So it really wasn't safe to drive. And they ended up, well, they ended up pulling over about two miles outside Gleason to camp out for the night. So I guess the story is they rolled their blankets out on the desert floor next to the railroad tracks and had just sort of bunked down for the night when all of a sudden, pew, gunshots. <laughs> I think it blew up the windshield of the car. There was Mexican banditos firing on them. Yikes. Well, I guess the sheriff grabbed a box of ammo and his rifle, and they both got flat down below the railroad grade uh, on the other side from where the shots were coming. And they kind of figured out, they, they couldn't see, obviously, what was going on, but there was an unknown number of presumed banditos firing on them. Now, unfortunately, the moon, I guess, had risen and was right behind the, sh the sheriff and his deputy. So they were like silhouetted against the moon and they were clearly visible <laughs> to the banditos. So they decided to just lay low and wait until the moon went, I guess the moon was going down, wait till the moon went down and then they would advance and uh, fire on the banditos. Well, it's a long story and you can read the whole thing on Wikipedia, <laughs> but after a bunch of shooting back and forth, I guess the sheriff did finally manage to shoot and wound one of the banditos to where all the Mexicans retreated back off into the hills. And in the morning, <laughs> the sheriff and his deputy went over and saw like horse hoof prints going back into the mountains and bloody knee prints from the one guy they shot, like dragging himself. And they found the cases of whiskey. <laughs> so I guess the shootout wasn't for nothing. They got the booze. Anyway, it took them like a month <laughs> before they finally caught the banditos uh, going over Apache Pass in the Chiricahua Mountains going back down into Mexico. And I don't think they actually ever did catch all of them, but they did at least apprehend one or two and, well, put them in the jail right here in Gleason. So these days, I guess uh, the Gleason jail is privately owned by some people who are fixing it up. Restore, they've restored it, and I think there's a museum inside. Unfortunately, it's not open today, even though it is a Saturday, and according to their website, it's open on the first and fourth Saturday of the month. There's nobody here, but that's okay. We could still look at the outside, and there's also a bunch of other old buildings uh, and some old mining ruins here in Gleason that we can go check out. I'm down here in Arizona on a ghost town tour. This will be part four in my ghost town tour of Arizona. This is the fourth ghost town 
well technically the fifth ghost town I've visited on this trip. I'm out here rolling around with a friend of mine just exploring the desert and enjoying the beautiful fall weather. Today is, well, as a matter of fact, today is Halloween. It's October 31st. And to that end, would you look what they did here at the Gleason Jail. Look at this old timey, uh, what is, I don't remember what kind of car this is. Chrysler. <laughs> they got a daddy skeleton, a mommy skeleton, and there's even a little baby skeleton in the middle in a, in a child seat. <laughs> It's pretty funny. And for good measure, there's a bullet hole right in the window. Anyway, I'm not sure what all's around this area. Uh, my friend's been here before, but I never have. So we're just gonna go uh, hiking and exploring around. And well, <laughs> to that end, I'm wearing my Arizona ghost town boots, <laughs> which I'm hoping are rattlesnake proof because God, I'm sure all this dry country over here is just crawling with rattlesnakes. <laughs> Even though it is almost November, it's still pretty warm, so. We gotta be careful, but I guess we're gonna get in the car and drive around and see what else we can see. Okay, so it looks like there's wreckage and ruins kind of strewn all throughout this valley, but it's also kind of confusing because there's a lot of fences up with no trespassing private property signs. So. I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to go in and take pictures of these ruins or not. Like, there's this really cool stone, <laughs> some ruins of an old stone house here, but I don't think I'm allowed to go in, unfortunately. That's the bummer about Arizona compared to Nevada, anyways, where I'm from. Uh, there's a lot of ghost towns in Nevada, but it's all BLM land, you know, federally managed public lands. So you're allowed to just go out and camp and hike and explore and make videos, take pictures. Down here, everything's friggin' privately owned. Makes exploring very difficult. With that being said, we're gonna drive around a little bit more and hopefully we can find some stuff to look at that is not on private property. And I should note that I'm going to be exceptionally careful about not trespassing here because, well, I don't know if you saw what that sign said at the beginning of town. It said Gleason, Arizona, population some, and then someone added with guns. And you know, today is just not a good day to be shot. Beautiful desert we're hiking through though. I mean, you can see lots of little mesquite bushes and these really cool little cactus. Look at these. I don't know what that is, but it's got these really interesting yellow, I don't know if these are like fruits or what. Oh man, they're just kind of like, they're hard and kind of waxy. Really neat, they almost look like little bunches of bananas. <laughs> and then of course these awesome, I guess those are like agave plants. And well, look at this one. <laughs> This is like the granddaddy of all the agaves because I guess it's something to do with the way this plant flowers. This one giant stalk comes out the middle and it's almost like a tree uh, from like Dr. Seuss. I love this. That's wild. And that's, you know, that's a pretty solid shoot coming out from the middle for reference. Yeah, it's like a tree trunk and it's one kind of hollow, maybe more like a, Maybe more like bamboo. Very interesting flora and fauna out here. I mean, you can see on the dirt road I'm walking on, or you might be able to see a lot of hoof prints from, I guess, horses. I'm guessing those, I was gonna say burrows, but I think they're horses because they look like they're shod, like wearing shoes. Doesn't that look like a horse shoe? Either way, uh, I'm apparently sharing the desert today with not only rattlesnakes and wasps and scorpions and well, some kind of horses or burrows, there's probably even, oh, javelinas, those little, they kind of look like a wild pig, but I think it's actually a rat, is what my friend was saying. Uh, and then, oh gosh, there's probably mountain lions out here. We've seen jackrabbits, all kinds of critters out here. And while my boots might be rattlesnake proof, but I don't think they're mountain lion proof, so I'm gonna have to be aware of my surroundings. Unfortunately, <laughs> Although there's a ton of ruins scattered all throughout this valley. There's all these gold danged, no trespassing signs everywhere you turn. And I don't really understand it because none of this land is developed at all. There's just really old rusty barbed wire fences up uh, with signs in place. So probably the guy who owns this property lives back in New York or something. He never even comes out here. So you tell me, what's the point? I mean, it's a classic white man's way. 
buy the land, put a fence around it, and keep everybody else off, even if you're not going to do anything with it yourself, by golly. <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense to me, but hey, what do I know? Man, like, look at the ruins of this awesome mine off there in the distance. I sure would love to go poking around that, but just like everything else in this dang area, it's fenced off and marked no trespassing. Dang it! <laughs> you know, I know there's touristy ghost towns you can go to, like, well, like Virginia City or uh, Bodie or Tombstone for that matter, but I don't know, man. I crave authenticity. I want to go to these real ghost towns off the beaten path. And by gum, they make it so dang hard in this state. Well, hell. I ended up in Tombstone, whether I wanted to or not. But hey, at least I didn't get shot in Gleason. Although, I am about to get shot here in Tombstone. Yikes.